Welcome back on this Friday to Better. So a lot of modern warfare takes place not on a distant battlefield, but in our computers and on our smartphones. In studio with us is local cyber expert Stan Prager from Go Geeks with more. Now, Stan, how do we avoid this warfare? We don't want to even enter We don't this. want to even be drafted for this one. So let's do part one first. Yeah. So okay. it's been in the news. Microsoft announced that 10,000 of its customers have been targeted in the last year by nation state cyber attacks. These are cyber attacks deliberately uh, launched by Iran, North Korea, and Russia primarily. When you say customers of Microsoft, you're talking like businesses? Well, it's I, not like Joe well, Blow from Des Moines. It actually mm. is. As it well. is. So it turns out that a about 85% of, of it is businesses, but about 15% of it are individuals. And they're primarily trying to target people who are associated with think tanks and involved ah, okay. in politics, what have you. A lot of it goes back to the uh, Russian election meddling in 2016 mm. and looking towards potential election meddling in 2020. But it turns out they're casting a very wide net, and all the data mining isn't related to, you know, disrupting democratic institutions. The big news this week that was co covered in the major media was that Microsoft is offering this election guard software for, you know, for, for people so that they could protect their elections. And, very you know, specific. Very specific, exactly. But what wasn't covered by well, the major media... what does Microsoft media, have to do with elections in the first place? Am I the, being naive? or They don't have anything to do with it. Okay. They come up with software that will help people keep the ballot boxes safe okay. and to double-check it, I to see. make sure that the actual votes that are being put, put in there are coming out correctly because there's concern with election tampering mm. and all of this, these cyber attacks play a role in it. Sure. But th the part that struck me that hasn't been covered in the major media with this is that the average individual who's part of this. I and mean, a lot of people are just thinking, that, yeah, it's very esoteric. Well, you know, it's just big, big companies and I'm not in a think tank or whatever, but 15% right. of these victims were just average, you know, Joes so, um, and Janes. So, um, uh, so I think it's important that everybody, you know, find a way to protect themselves from this, you know, even if you're not part of a think tank or part of an election you know, uh, organization or something. It's because, just good policy. Well, exactly. But how you know? do we? How do you protect yourself from a, a foreign nation state? I mean, it sounds like a pretty big task. Right. Well, you actually protect yourself exactly the same way you would from any cyber attack, okay. from Ukrainian criminals, from anybody else going after mm. you. The primary way we found recently that they're getting in to systems, both businesses and individuals, um, and randomly is through email. So very, very important that you protect your email by changing your password, of having course. a strong password, and changing it frequently. Because what they do is they get into your email and they lurk for months, sometimes a oh, year, and creepy. they'll collect all your information. So that's the number one thing. Number two thing is if you see, you notice your computer's like behaving wonky or slow sure. or whatever, have, a, have an expert check it out. Have a check professional check it out. We, you know, at Go Geeks, <laughs> we tell people all the time, bring it in, let us look sure. at it. Because if you do have malware on there, you want to find out about it. You don't want to be a victim. Great advice. Right. Good to see you, Stan. Good to see you. Thank you.